Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write a game engine from scratch. We are almost done with the basic functions of the texture editor. Today we are going to add a side panel where we display various texture properties such as texture size, format, number of MIP levels and more. We start by adding a new user control where we'll display the texture details information. As always, I'll adjust the namespace so that this control will reside in editor's namespace. Let's also add the design time view model and set a nice background for this control. Since this will be a side panel, I change its design time dimensions so that it will have a vertical orientation. Here we add a horizontal stack panel that contains the texture property names on the left and the value of each item on the right side. I'll also add a default style for all text blocks within this stack panel. We want to have the names stacked vertically on top of each other, so we add another stack panel. Here we put the names of all texture properties that we are interested in. The second stack panel will contain the values of these properties. We can directly bind some of the values to their corresponding property in the view model. For some cases, however, I'm going to use converters in order to display their value in a user-friendly manner. For example, instead of displaying the enum value of texture dimension, which would say texture 2D, I'm going to use this helper function that gets the description of an enum value and use it in a converter. This will return 2D texture, which is how reasonably normal humans would describe such an asset. I often put the converters in the code behind file of the XAML control where they are used. However, some of the converters that we are going to write in today's video can be used in multiple places within the editor. Therefore, it's better to put them at one place in the same namespace. To do so, I'll create a new file and call it converters.cs. Here I'll add our enum description converter. It can be used in two ways. We can provide it with a list of enum values and it will return a list of description strings. We can also give it a single enum value and it will return just a string with its description. Otherwise, the original value is returned without conversion. I would like to access these converters from the root namespace, which is primal editor. So I'll remove the common namespace. Now we can add this converter to our user controls resources. And we can use it for displaying the texture dimension. For the texture size, I'd like to display the width, height, and depth of the top-level MIP map. The size of the currently selected slice will be displayed within parentheses. 
Obviously, we need another converter that will construct a string in this format given the texture and the selected slice. I think that it should be a multi-converter since it depends on multiple properties. This time I'm not going to put this converter in the common converters file. Since this one is specific to this use case, I'll put it here in the code behind file. This will implement a multi value converter. If the array of values has a non zero length and the first value is a texture editor, then we have all information that we need in order to construct our string. We use the texture width and height for the top level size and the selected slices width and height for the current slice. We need to append the depth to these strings if it's a 3D texture. Come to think of it, the converter only uses the texture editor view model, which is the data context for details view. So perhaps we can even do this with a regular value converter. Let me change it so it implements the iValue converter in set. Add it to user controlled resources and use it in our binding. We can use a dot to indicate that we want to bind to the data context itself. To display the texture format, we can bind to format name property, which uses enum get description method to get the format name. Next, we bind to textures import date and format it like so. Now for the texture's data size, I'll add a horizontal stack panel. This is only visible if the selected slice is not null. To calculate the data size, we need to add the data sizes of all image slices together. We can do this using a data size property in the view model. We used the sum extension method to add up the size of all buffers containing the pixel data of each slice. We do need to notify the UI to get this value whenever the selected slice is changed or a new texture asset is loaded in the editor.
Now we need to format the calculated total data size in the same way we formatted the file sizes in the content browser. So the size will be displayed as a number followed by a size suffix which indicates the units of that number in kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes and so on. So all we have to do is add this converter to the resources and use it to format the size. In addition to this, I'd also like to display the size of the currently selected slice within the parentheses. To do this, we can bind to the selected slices raw content size and use the same converter again. Displaying the number of MIP levels is trivial. Finally, we need a converter that returns yes or no when given a boolean value. Obviously, it will return yes for true and no for false. We can use this converter to display whether the texture is a normal map or if it's an HDR image. I think this will do for now, but feel free to add any other properties that you like displayed when opening a texture asset. Our texture details viewer is now ready to be added to the texture editor. Let's have a look and see if it works. I see we are missing the value for the texture size, so I should take a look at that. Everything else seems about right. Let me try a few things to see if we can get this to work. Oh, I see. The binding is never updated because there is obviously no property changed event for the data context. So we need another property that will trigger the UI to update. My initial idea to use a multi-value converter was probably right after all. So we bind to data context but used the selected slice bitmap property as a trigger to update the UI. And I'll have to make this an iMultiValue converter again. It looks like it's working now, I just need to improve the formatting a bit.
And that's it pretty much for the texture details. Let me quickly do a global editor test and see if we didn't mess up anything while creating the texture editor. Everything seems to be still working. Excellent. I think there is some time left, so we can do one more thing. And that's to display the state of the editor. Texture assets can take some time to be loaded in the editor. Later, we'll also use the texture editor to re-import and save textures using different settings. We'd like to notify the user that some operation is happening in the background while they are viewing the texture. This is done by setting the state of the editor and displaying an indicator for each state. Here, I'm going to use the same format as for the zoom label. It's a semi-transparent border with a text which depends on the editor's state. We can use a set of data triggers in order to change the text. Note that we could also have used the enum description converter for this. However, doing it this way will allow us to also set other properties, such as the text color, depending on the state. Next, I'd like to make this label blink as soon as it's loaded. This animation will go on forever. In a minute, we'll write a separate animation to change the visibility of this label. As you can see here, we set the state to loading when the asset is being loaded and to done when the loading ended either successfully or in failure. Now we can see that the correct state message is shown when we open a texture. We would like to hide this label sometime after the state was set to done. Here we'll use a double animation to fade out the label first and then an object animation using keyframes will set its visibility to collapsed. This happens only when the state is changed to state done. We want the label to become visible again when it changes from state done to any other state. For this we use exit actions, where we set the label visibility and turn up the opacity. I'll have to figure out what this error message means.
Ah, of course. This should be target property and not target name. Now we see that the label fades out after it's done loading. This is it for this episode of the Game Engine programming series. In the next episode, I'm going to do a bit of code cleanup and start working on a settings configurator, which can be used to, well, configure settings before importing assets. Thank you so much as always for joining me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!